I'm sorry. I don't remember any of it. You don't remember? For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. Damn, Drew. Bison's private quarters is hot. Dare I say it. Sexy looking? How much does that place go for on Zillow? What's it listed? <laughs> Can you buy that? I'd live there. I, I don't know, Drew. There. I don't know, Drew, but like this movie had so many good clips. It's like, I just feel like I want another clip. Just could you find me? Could we just do this again? Can we start I, another clip? I think I got another one for you here. There, I, I got another one. This, this is the only one we could play next. <laughs> Colonel Guy O'Chumley and GNT News. May we speak to you, sir, please? No. But don't you want to speak to the world audience? No. But I do want to talk to someone. That bastard bison! I know you like to look at yourself on television, you six and a half a bitch. So look at this. <laughs> Did this dude just provoke like a, a terrorist dictator on television, like to the news? <laughs> Did he just and he flexed? Did he just do that? Am I? Did I see the same thing that you saw? This is the cockiest son of a bitch colonel that we've ever seen in movie history, is it not? It's ridiculous, <laughs> but I love it. I don't know, man. You know what I love? I love the clips in this movie, man. You got another clip for me? You fire, right. fire one more up for I me? Get, I got one more for you. Right. I'll, get, I'll give you one more. That's it. I don't want to get right. taken down off of a copyright strike All here. Right. We're going to stream the whole movie. Colonel. Yes? A single boat against everything he's got? The pilot would have to be out of his mind. Damn, Drew. No, you didn't just call that guy out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I know it's a small part, but... <laughs> Clearly. Can we get somebody better? <laughs> Can oh, we get somebody man. better? You called the guy out. Like, we were all thinking it. Worst actor of all time. <laughs> I know it's a small part, man, but come on. <laughs> no, I heard a rumor that this guy was supposed to be Ryu in the movie. Like, I don't know if it's because his acting was bad. Maybe he's good at martial artists. Oh, yeah, but yep. We and know. His, lines, his lines and probably all the other lines in this movie just seemed 80 yard to me. Don't they, don't they seem like they were recorded in post? Just it does, the, yeah. It, it seemed never like matched. It, was, it seemed like it was dubbed over for sure. <laughs> well, anyway, welcome back. This is episode 74 of The Last uh, Rope Podcast. Are we get, we're actually doing the episode. I thought we were just going to do clips all day. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got one. Maybe, maybe I'll save one for the end. We'll see. <laughs> if, you, if you stick around for the end, maybe oh, I got another there's, one There's one more. There's at least one more. <laughs> Our website is thelastrowpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at The Last Row Pod, Facebook.com slash The Last Row Pod. Instagram at The Last Row Pod, everywhere you can find at The Last Row Pod, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Thanks to everybody that's left us a five star review. Bad way. We finally did it. We finally we're did it. We're, we're, uh, we're facing our demons, you know. Been Batman forever, said we'd never do it. Now we're doing Street Fighter, said we'd never do it. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like an odd reference, but in the movie Orgasmo, you know, for yeah. the maker, from Trey Parker and Matt Stone, where the kid go, where the guy goes, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do hamster style anymore. It's kind of like that, where it's like we said it to nobody, and it meant this nothing. This is hamster it was not, style. It, yeah, this is our hamster style. <laughs> it's like to the to the two people that get that reference. We we got a bunch of people writing in, you know, over the past couple of years, or, or well, years before the years that yeah. we were off. But we got a lot of people asking for this yeah. movie, and for some reason, it was just something that we were yeah. afraid to tackle. And it's like, you know what? We're never going to do Street Fighter. Oh, we, that's finally nice. <laughs> we finally did. We finally did. Hit me up with a synopsis. Uh, Street Fighter, the movie, colon the movie, Gotta have colon, colon the podcast, 1994, action slash sci-fi slash video game movie, IMDV 4.0 out of 10. Too high. Too, uh, too low. Too, too low. low. Too low. Too high. Too low. Rotten Tomatoes 10%. Too high. Too low. Too low. Metacritic not available. Too, about uh, right. too low. It's about right. <laughs> <laughs> Too written, written and directed by Stephen E. De Swaza, 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 Slippy, Souza, Slippy, Slappy, Swimmy, Swami. Drew, before I get into the plot synopsis, I know that we're just like what if we're like forty minutes in already? We haven't done anything yet. This this guy has a very interesting career. So Stephen Stephen De, De Swaza, I'm going to call him Swaza. Is that far? You okay with that? Yeah, you're good. I'm good. Right. I'm good with that. This is his only movie he's ever he's ever directed. Like he's he's directed some TV movies. I look up on his IMDb, a couple episodes of of a show that nobody's ever heard of, and Street Fighter, and that was it. 
Are you saying first and last? Like first and last? Or this yes, is the like only ma- one he like did major to movie that movie that went to the theaters. Wow. He directed a, yeah first and last. And this torpedoed his career too. Well, I wouldn't say that. All right. Because when you go over to his writing IMDb, you know? this man, this man wrote. Are you ready? Yeah. Forty eight hours. Ooh. Commando. Ooh. Running Man. Ooh. Die Hard. Die Hard 2. Are you kidding me? Another 48 hours. Are you kidding me? Beverly Hills Cop 3. Judge Dredd. Laura Croft of the, of the Cradle of Life. This man wrote the screenplay for all of those movies. Now, look, there's a couple stinkers in there, but that, by and large, guy's got some talent. And he also wrote this. So yeah, right. That's... It, is it studio meddling? Is it video game studio meddling? Yeah. What happened here? So when I say written, it's either written or the screenplay. Either way, like he was a major part of some blockbuster action movies, man. So this guy has some talent. It's kind of like I'm thinking it's like the coach who sucked at while well, by playing, but he's yeah. a good coach. He couldn't play the game, obviously, because this movie wasn't good at all. And it was his first and last major motion picture that he directed. So he couldn't he play the game, but he could coach it. He Coach didn't the have the skills. It. Yeah, it's yeah. like he had the brain for it, and he had the talent, but not yep. the execution. Absolutely. I, oh man, that's that's interesting. And I and I'll be honest, I didn't look that up before yeah. we did this. So you're you're hitting me with that live. It's shocking, I didn't huh? know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. What you will find on his IMDb page will shock you. Will shock you. We got to put that as our clickbait <laughs> for our for our episode on Twitter here. Anyway, Street Fighter Cole in the movie General Bison, the evil dictator of Shadaloo. Captures a busload of relief workers and holds them for ransom. Colonel Guile leads an international strike force to invade Shadaloo and rescue the hostages. Along the way, Guile recruits Chud Li, a reporter and martial arts expert whose father was killed by Bison years ago, two young con men, and a sumo wrestler. That's and it. And I, I feel like that synopsis was like incomplete. I don't That's know where it. you're getting these synopsis from, Drew, but it's really <laughs> like I could blame you because you're the one that put it in the write up. But yeah. you didn't write it, so <laughs> yeah, okay. I can't. I can't fully blame you. There was nothing else that I saw. I mean, there was one on IMDb that was just like ten pages long, and I figured, you know what, our notes are already ten pages long. We can't add another yeah. ten page synopsis here, so yeah. I went with the incomplete one. It's the best I could find. <laughs> yeah, I mean, point. we try to. Yeah, we try to get it out of these episodes in under ninety minutes. You know, so <laughs> yeah, we can't. We just can't, minutes. We just can't be reading synopsis all day. Drew. Come on. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> there was a bunch of taglines for this one too, and I felt like only one was worth mentioning. You tell me what you're thought of, uh, or what you what you rate this one. All right, hit me with it. Get ready for the ultimate street fight. <laughs> Is it accurate? Six out of ten. Yeah, five out of ten. Were there any street fights in this movie? There were no streets. There was there was a little bit of fights, but there were no streets. There was kind of a street outside of like the AN headquarters. It was like a I dirt. Guess. It was a dirt patch. When Van Damme faked street. his own death, <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that, that was not a street. That was a dirt road. The, the ketchup, the ketchup packet in the in the stomach trick against would, the, uh, the, the plot. <laughs> <laughs> would would dirt road fighter? Would that was that marketable? Yeah, I dirt, guess that, dirt I road guess that wasn't marketable. Dirt road fighter. <laughs> so you had what to switch think, it over to street. What do you think of the financials for this thirty five million dollar budget? I thought stir ninety nine million dollar return. So it was the, profitable. The second note I wrote down when watching this movie, the first note was was just plain Bisonopolis, which we'll get to <laughs> later. <laughs> I want a map of that on my yeah. wall here. But the second note I wrote is just, quote, everything is cheap. Oh, yeah. It everything, looked like a prop department at a yeah, high school made it. Everything about this, the sets of this movie looked cheap, specifically Bison's lair, where, like, people would sit down to the computer desks and, like, the entire, like, it was shaking. Main frame, they would shake, right? It looked. It just looked like it was made of styrofoam, I'm right? I'm glad you saw that, because yeah. I saw it too. Yeah. And like, they didn't care to fix it. <laughs> they didn't care. They didn't give a shit. I'm so glad you yeah. saw that. It's just, everything was cheap to like the, the boulders that were like, when people were busting through your walls, like everything was bad. Was the foam. doors that were auto opening and closing, Bison's little like moped, you know, scooter thing, air scooter thing, hoverboard. <laughs> That looked cheap and like was moving ricketed. Rick, was it ricketedly? Is that a yeah. word? R- rickety. R- rickety. <laughs> would you would you say the most expensive thing that they had was the arcade joystick? Which is yeah. like if you go to buy that, that's like eight hundred dollars to get your get house. That, you, you can't get that cheap. Hook that up to your 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 switch. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it, it, it's like thirty five million budget. Like yeah, it's not a it's not a very large budget. But like where they put the money? Did they spend thirty four million dollars on Raul Julia? 
<laughs> Probably. <laughs> I did see. Did. No, I did. I did. So I did see a little bit of a of a thing <laughs> where I think like nine or ten million of I forgot the exact number, but a giant chunk of that was Van Damme's salary. A giant yeah. chunk of it. I yeah, forgot it the sense. exact percentage. Yeah. But th- this movie. So I, I wanna I wanna start by talking about kind of the making of this movie and maybe some of the behind the scenes of this movie because there's yeah. a lot here. I don't I don't know that the plot really matters that much. We'll get to that and we'll get to some of the characters, but it doesn't matter. There's so much behind the scenes with this movie. I have a little pe- a, a few pieces of trivia, just some things that we can talk about, and I want to get your thoughts on this. So. Just the first thing that I found about this was that Steven D'Souza actually deferred his salary to pay for his cast for this for the movie. So deferred that's an honorable mean, act there. Deferred meaning he got it eventually, right? I would assume he probably had some just, kind of deal that said tickets or whatever. They made the money. I mean, yeah. it, it made money, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like a flop. No, no, no. It was fairly successful. I mean, critically, it was it was panned. But sure, you know, did you see this in the theater when you were a kid? I feel like I did. Like I did. I, I definitely feel like did. I did, but I can't I loved confirm it. that. I mean, at the I'm, time, I'm sure I loved it. Nobody's going to go fact check that, but like, I'm yeah. pretty sure I did. The the other thing that was also a hot topic at the time was Van Damme, and I think we talked about this on our Mortal Kombat episode. Go back and listen to it. Check out our back catalog. Which one? We, did, we, we, had we did Mortal Kombat one and Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Both great episodes. Both great. Check them out. Two but Van Damme too. actually turned down the role of Johnny Cage in the '95 Mortal Kombat to do mm. this movie. Mm. So let me ask you, sir. Interesting. Would Mortal Kombat have been as good with him as Cage, and did he make the right move? No, and no. <laughs> <laughs> No, Mortal Kombat would not have been better with Van Damme. And also, no, he didn't make the right decision. He probably should have gone with Mortal Kombat. Why do you no, say that? I don't know. You know what? I, I don't know. I don't know if Mortal Kombat would have been better or not. It, it could have. I guess it could have used star power, I suppose. Christopher Lambert wasn't big enough for you? No, no. <laughs> As <wasn't>. Raiden? No. <laughs> I, really I like bad. Johnny Cage. Uh, he's kind of, I don't know who he is. Like He's kind of a no-name guy who yeah. played Johnny Cage. I don't know. I kind of like that. I feel like it would have been distracting if 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 um if Van Damme played him, and maybe maybe he, Van Damme is better off being Guile in this movie, just because. I mean, the movie's like, admittedly, it's very bad, right? So yeah, it's bad. So, but it's also pretty enjoyable, like oddly oddly satisfying, I would say. And I think I think Van Damme's charm has a lot to do with that, even though he wasn't very good in it. But like his badness was 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 kind of like flipped around to be a good thing. Yeah, I mean, look, and and I'll jump to him because I have some stuff about Raul Julia and, and like, why did people do this movie, right? Yeah. Like, the details about Julia was that he did this because his kids were Street Fighter fans and he wanted uh, to do something that they would dad. like. That's a great dad's dad of the year here. Yeah. But, you know, we talk about we have bad fathers on this podcast, but <laughs> that's a good father right there. He did the movie for yeah. his kids. Yeah. But with Van Damme, to go back to him, he's like, apparently he was notoriously hard to work with on this. He had a major <laughs> substance abuse problem where they said he was blowing 10K per week on coke. Ah. He was coked out of his mind. They had to hire a wrangler just to make sure that he was on set. Like, oh, wait, what is wait, a wait, wrangler wait, wait, anyway? A wrangler? I've never, uh, wrangler? Is that like Dalton? Is it like a cooler? <laughs> is a cooler? <laughs> so he, he had a presidential hotel suite. He had a gym put in his room. He used to refuse to come out of his trailer until he felt ready. And then when he would come out, there was rumors that he brought alcohol to the set and he would take multiple hours to shoot his scenes. Yep, makes like, sense. This was 94, so it wasn't like where his career started to tank here. This was kind of peak well, Van Damme, wasn't it? Well, Because Sudden Death was 95. Mm, or is this the, the beginning of the end for you? I'd probably the beginning of the end. Like, uh, yeah, I, I mean, we love Sudden Death. And by the way, I mean, if you want to see Sudden Death, <laughs> there you go. hear about it. I mean, we have a podcast on that as well. You can go back <laughs> in our history. Through. But if you, look at, if, you look, if you look at his IMDb that I'm looking at right this second, I mean... He's kind of, sort of tumbling after after Street Fighter Sudden Death. Was this it? Right. I don't even know if Sudden Death is a good movie or not. I I just like it a lot. And I know yeah, you like I mean, it a lot. I don't think Hollywood r- yeah. would rate it like you know Oscar worthy, but I love that movie. I mean, we're talking The Quest. Nah. Although yeah, Christopher Dubois is a great name. But didn't didn't he direct that too? I'm pretty sure he directed I that. I can't recall. Maximum Risk. Double yeah. Team was just come on. Double Team. That double Team's wrong. pretty good, yeah. but. Yeah. <laughs> Knock off, eh. Universal eh. Soldier, The Return, eh. Sequel to a... Uh, eh. Yeah, let's... Eh. It was kind of going down. 
this is the beginning of the end, I would say. All right. Fair enough. I mean, but he he was he was a huge asshole on this movie. And I, and I also heard that he had an affair with Kylie Minogue during this movie. Well, I imagine he has affairs with all of his He probably does, co-stars. right? Yeah. He he sure. definitely was a little creepy on this to Chun, the, the actress Chung Lee, like the, who played Chun Lee and all this stuff. And apparently so everybody liked Kylie Minogue. Everybody loved Raul Julia and he was of should we drop it now? I mean, I think everybody knows this by now, but yeah. Raul Julia was terminally ill with stomach cancer. Yeah, man. Like, I mean, he really gutted it out. I mean, no, no pun intended. He literally acted his yeah. life off right now. Yeah, yeah. He, like, put, he put his heart and soul into it, for sure. He really put on a clinic. He put on an acting clinic for this. And, you know, they said he was great to work with. So, you know, if you're Van Damme, like, this guy's dying of stomach cancer, and you're out there just, like, in your hotel room refusing to come out like a diva doing coke. He probably does. He probably is like unaware, you know, he's probably in his own, you know, he's probably in his own head. He has no idea what Raul Julia is going through. I'm sure. I I got one quote. Are you professional? Are you professional (laughs) or not? Because that's what I would say. A lot (laughs) lot would say say that Van Damme is not professional in a lot of movies that he's done, like along with like the action star diva of of this time period, like like a uh, Steven Seagal, if you will. You know, these guys, some of these guys were assholes at the time. By the way, you mentioned Kylie Minogue. Do you know this was her first major major role? She she did acting before, but this was like her first major motion picture. She victory. she was not bad. She was not great, but for that being the case, she I, wasn't terrible. I think you're being kind. I, I've seen worse. I've, I've seen been, worse. I've seen better. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen worse. <laughs> not many, but I've seen better. <laughs> so so one other piece of trivia here. There was some controversy around the physical training part of this movie. Mm -hmm. There was a Hollywood trainer and a karate champion named Betty Urquidez. And then there was another guy hired, Charlie Pizzerni. I can't even pronounce the guy's name, but he was a stunt coordinator. It doesn't matter what his name is, Drew. Not to to, to quote The Rock, but... (laughs) Yeah, long long story short, this guy, Charlie, took the job. These guys took the job on the condition that they'd get ample ample time to train the cast. Fair enough. D'Souza agreed, but there was problems because... Arquides didn't have any experience with video game fighting. Mm-hmm. And that was found out halfway through the shoot that the characters oh. should have different fighting styles. And I don't know if it was D'Souza who brought this up or Arquides. Like, I don't know who it was. And I'm hoping I'm saying that guy's name right too, but you know, it whatever. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. But basically, you know, how do you find this out halfway through the shoot? True. I'm going to stop you right there. I'm sorry. But like to say that you don't have the, the experience to know which character fighting style goes with which guy or like they have, right. or, or if they even have different fighting styles, this movie more than any other movie is so easy to figure out because it has a video game. That's sole purpose is fighting to research. Yeah. Go to the mall, pop a quarter in the arcade <laughs> machine and you can figure out how Ryu throws a they kick money. or how freaking Zangief likes to wrestle or Balrog likes to box exactly. or how, or Sagat is, you know, a jujitsu fighter or whatever the hell. I don't know. Yeah. Like, all it takes is a quarter or go buy Super Nintendo or Sega yeah. Genesis. Like, it's not a secret. It's not like in some guy's brain, you know, like, oh, this guy wrote this movie. I don't know how he wants these guys to fight. Like, the yeah. lore is like this. This this franchise has no other lore other than the identity of their fighting style. It's Street right? Fighter 2. That's it. Yeah, I mean, that's it's- it. That's all it is. So. I hope he's not like putting this on the director that he wasn't given like direction or like, like just dude, just go to the mall, put, you know, you know, like you, you put your quarter like on the, you know, <laughs> you got to reserve your spot, you gotta reserve your spot. You put the quarter on the, on the lip of the screen. You That's all you had to do. It. Put your quarter on the lip of the screen. It's like you, know like you shovel about, your car out. You got to put the, put the chair in the, in the parking spot. Let's say, let's say you don't want to spend a quarter, Drew. Just sit back and watch the teenagers go at it, man. These kids are good. Get the notebook, man. Just get the notebook out. <laughs> Although uh, it's probably Ryu versus Ryu most times, like you know, uh, yeah, exactly. Ryu, you know, it's pink, like everybody's the, picking Ryu, the pink and the, <laughs> and the white or whatever yeah. the color was. I mean, they clearly didn't know about what what Blanca did, Drew. <laughs> no, they didn't. Oh, we'll get they into still, that. They still look at fighting, but but anyway, the poor man's Lou Ferrigno. I didn't mean to like. I didn't mean to like step in on my soapbox, no, but no. So so I don't know, and I saw something else. It's not in here, but there was something because Capcom was pushing this Christmas release. I don't know if it was a situation. I saw something where they had to film things simultaneously and maybe these guys were off and D'Souza wasn't there so he wasn't watching these things. I don't know. The other thing that I saw too was because Raul Julia was dying of stomach cancer during the during the movie, putting on the performance of his life, they had to shift around the way that they shot his scenes because I think you told me before he had to recover from, you know, obviously being dying of cancer. Yeah. So he couldn't film these physical scenes. 
So there was all these situations where the other cast members were having to get their scenes moved up. Oh. And what sucked for that is there's, there's a specific example that they called out. Byron Mann, the guy who played Ryu, he didn't hear of the knife fight with Vega until a few hours beforehand. So he asked this Thai <laughs> stuntman to train him on the spot. And they did the fight with a real blade. So this guy could have gotten really like, <laughs> could you imagine? Like if he died on the set of what Street is, Fighter, the amateur movie? hour, Drew. What are you telling me? <laughs> like, I don't know what's going Where's on. Where's Christian Bale? Are you professional yeah. or not? As are you, you say. professional? What's, what's that's, going on here? That's all I'm like. I don't understand what the hell was going on on the set of this movie. And when you hear all oh. these things, right? Tell me that you can understand why it turned out the way that it did. But I'm gonna say uh, something controversial here. Go ahead. I still enjoyed the hell out of this movie. I yeah. got to tell you. Yeah, but I can tell you right now. I understand why this guy never directed another movie again. Yeah, I mean, this guy didn't have a hold of his guys. He didn't. It's like, couldn't couldn't run the show. They could gave him all the, the money. Yeah. They gave him the thing. He was in over his head. This yeah, guy was totally in over, over his, his head. head. Yeah, he he was out of his element. You know, yeah. and Stick to I, I I we put this on Twitter and we put it on on Facebook and everything. And you know, it, it is a fun thing to bash on this movie. But I got to tell you, I was I was kind of thinking it was going to be really bad. And it wasn't good. Right, unwatchable. Yeah. yeah, like when we watched Mortal Kombat Annihilation, I remember that it was, that was hard to watch. It was hard to watch, it was. I still kind of enjoyed it on some level, as we said back in, sure. I think it was episode 61. But, you know, you look at this movie, I was entertained as hell. Like it was bad, but it was so bad that yeah. it was good. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was the, it was the good bad territory. It was. And, and I think that kind of is a good transition because I'd like to ask you, how does this movie compare to the Mortal Kombat franchise? And I know the new trailer for that movie just dropped and I'm Ooh, super pumped to timely. watch that. I can't wait. But what are your thoughts on this one versus the Mortal Kombat franchise? Did you like it as much? Like, is it different to you? What do you think? Oh, yeah. The, the Mortal Kombat franchise is definitely, in my opinion, better. I, I, I grew up as a Mortal Kombat guy over a Street Fighter guy. I had both games, but I tended to gravitate towards the Mortal Kombat games. Um, particularly two, Mortal Kombat two to me was like the greatest fighting game, Great game. By, of of me growing up. I'm not saying it was the best, but it was my favorite. But as far as the movies go, yeah, even the movies. Cause I was so into Mortal Kombat. I also, even though more, Annihilation was terrible, and I knew it when I like when I was a kid, I still liked it better than this movie. This yeah. movie, I don't know. It didn't. As a kid, like it didn't. I didn't get some of the jokes. I guess it just wasn't. There wasn't a ton of action until the very end of the movie. And like the idea of Van Damme as like a, I don't know. I don't want to call him a joke, but kind of, I don't <laughs> know, like, like a lovable, of, yeah. a lovable action star. Like as a kid, it didn't, it didn't resonate as much with me yeah. as, as with other, other uh, like Stallone or, or Schwarzenegger, for example. Right. Two, for example. So no. Yeah. I was totally on Mortal Kombat. How about you? I think I think Van Damme is I hate to say this, but he's aged like a fine wine to me. You know, like that kind of guy. Like well said. I didn't enjoy him as much as everybody knows that listens to this. I love Schwarzenegger, he's one of my favorites growing up. And him and Stallone and, and even Seagal to a degree, even though Seagal's kind of a joke and he was a joke then. True. It was like he was bad that he was so he was so bad that he was good. You know, yeah. his movies were so ridiculous. Van Damme was kind of lost in the shuffle. I liked him, but I like him more now than I did back then. And there's just Me something too. about it, but I agree with you. I don't think this is as good as the Mortal Kombat movies, but the Mortal Kombat movies were kind of trying to be serious where this was yeah. not really like, yeah, I don't the, know yeah. what this was. It had a weird tone. It's definite, definite intentional comedy thrown in there, particularly like in the bumbling, uh, bad guy territory. Yeah. You know? There's a lot of jokes yeah. and, and Mortal Kombat had, some one-liners, I guess, but they were more like like cool. They were trying to be cool, whereas this was just outright kind of making jokes, which right. yeah. looking back on it now, I enjoy that. It was kind of funny. It was campy, mm -hmm. right? Campy is the way maybe I would describe right. it. Yeah, yeah, totally. And the game, I agree with you too. I would say Mortal Kombat 3 was was my favorite. I like that one the best because I liked the, the, the Sub-Zero style, the non- The non-masked. Like, cool outfit, yeah. 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 I like the scar, the scar face. Um, Sub Zero was my favorite, and the combos in that were great. Yeah, yeah, that was the introduction of the combos for sure. So I thought maybe we could rattle off some of the characters. I grouped them by maybe their affiliation. We'll talk a little bit about some of these guys, and I'll go through them quick, and then I'd like to get some of your thoughts on this. But okay. we've got the AN forces, and their primary motivation is to go after Bison. So you got Colonel Guile. He's commanding forces of the AN. 
I guess I don't know the the Associated Nations. I forgot what it's uh, what it stood for. Who you got T Hawk. He's a sergeant <laughs> under Guile, who's kind of whatever. You got Cammy, played by Kylie Kylie Minogue. She's a lieutenant. You got Blanca, Carlos, Charlie, his friend, Charlie, Charlie. We're going to get you. <laughs> and then you got the TV crew, which is like I don't know ragtag group of guy guys and girls here. You got Chun Li. <laughs> She's got this bison motivation thing for her dad's village getting destroyed. She's yep. a TV reporter, and she says that she was in deep cover for years. You've got Balrog, who's like a cameraman, I guess. Slash <laughs> former boxing champion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess Slash it awesome haircut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's commitment to the role, man. Yeah. And then you got E. Honda, who's like the, the van operator slash like, I don't even know what the hell he's doing. And then you got, <laughs> I don't even, <laughs> he's like in the van pushing the satellite button. I don't know. It's a lot like me here. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm yeah. doing. So I can, I can relate to e Honda. <laughs> Are you e Honda? Am I Chun-Li? <laughs> you're, you're my Chun-Li. I'm your e Honda. Then you got Sagat's crew who they're out selling arms and holding cage matches like a crime Lord. And you got Vega in there who walks around like the, the gif of that guy walking out with the with the staff, you know what I'm talking about, with oh, the yeah. chest puffed yeah. out, proud. And then you got, to me, the dumbest backstory in the whole movie, Ken and Ryu, who are con artists. I don't even know what yeah. they're bumbling, conning. Bumbling, ragtag con artists. Yeah. And then you've got Bison's crew, who we'll talk about when we get to the villain scale. They're just about world domination. You got yeah. DJ, you got Zangief, and then you got Dalsim, but he's not really part of his crew. He's more of a prisoner. Yeah, he's a I prisoner, guess. I guess, as well, yeah. I mean, having said all of that, what the hell is going on in this movie? I don't know, man. <laughs> I really don't know. Like, and I liked it. Yeah, they they like they had to be sure to get every character in there, so they got every character in there, whether they fit or not. Like, for example, I didn't even know T Hawk was T Hawk until I like three either. quarters of the way through the movie. Well, they didn't say his name till the end. No, they, like they he was just, he was just like a soldier or whatever, a sergeant. Yeah, and like I thought. Maybe this is me maybe being racially insensitive. I don't know. I thought E. Honda was Japanese, like, in the I game. thought so, too. And not, now he's not Samoan. Now he's, now he's a Samoan. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I loved Sagat's look. I thought Sagat, like, he definitely, he looked like a crime boss, like, with the eye patch. Like, you got an eye patch, like, that'll get your points on the villain scale. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for sure. And I also enjoyed um, DJ and Zankeef. Like, the, the, like the, they're kind of, like, basically bumbling henchmen. Yeah, they're it was upper, like, they're, they're like sergeant goons, so to speak, you know? I, I listed DJ as a switchboard operator because I feel like he's <laughs> just, he doing? He was he's just, just con- there pushing buttons yeah. and, and tor- turning knobs. Yeah. Like he was, he was basically controlling Bison's little scooter. <laughs> yeah. that, that was his main job. He was doing that yeah. and, and he was just turning switches, yeah. knobs. I, I don't know what the hell he's he a was switch doing. Flipper. Yeah. I thought, and I don't know, maybe it's not the best time to ask you, but I, I do want to touch on Guile. Just Van Damme, is he the right fit for this? I, I don't even know. I, I, don't I know. just don't even know. I, I would say if we if we were going to recast it, like, and you really wanted to have, like, a slam dunk action star, I could totally see Kurt Russell being Guile in this movie I instead think, of Van Damme. I think you nailed it. I think I mean, it would, he is great. It would have turned the movie around. Yeah. I mean, you, you know? had Raul Julia. He was acting his heart yeah. off and he's like an yep. accomplished actor. Sure. At this time, I don't want to say JCVD was a joke because he wasn't, but he was he was a joke of a, of, a, of a person because he was doing coke and not taking his duties seriously. Yeah. If you had a professional like Kurt Russell in here, yeah. you know, straight off of like Escape from L.A. or whatever, I forgot what year that came out. I think he would have been an awesome bison. Yeah. And or, it's I'm not- sorry, uh, Guile. Yeah, and it's not like Guile is like this super martial arts expert in the no, game, he's a tough right? Guy. I mean, he does the the sonic boom, uh, like flip flip special move, right? Yeah, but like that's like a fake move. Like you could have Kurt Russell Wires doing the flip move, like, <laughs> and instead of being a martial arts guy that Van Dam portrayed him as, you could just had Kurt Russell beating Bison's ass, you know, just being tough. Didn't yeah. have to be a martial arts guy. Yeah, I mean, I. I don't know. I like I like Kurt Russell. And when you think about a lot of the other people, I don't know that I would have recasted a lot of other people, to be honest. No. Like, I don't I don't know. Like, I, I thought no Rogue was perfect. It's it's actually it, it benefits these movies for most of the characters to be unknown because you get in that territory of having too many names. Then, you know, they got they got agents that want screen time. Yeah. And then it turns into a whole freaking mess. Like. 
like the way Marvel does it with their movies is like a minor miracle how they get all these stars in a movie and actually have it make sense and have screen time for everybody. I mean, they really, I don't want to say they were the pioneers because uh, maybe they weren't, but they really kind of were of the modern area. Like you never saw that kind of star power in a movie. Like when the Expendables came out, that was like, oh my God, how are these guys all in in a movie finally? Because you couldn't have them all sharing screen time. Yeah. So that's why you got to have these people with less, with, with less experience that just like can fit the role well. And, and I wouldn't blame the movie being bad on any of these actors, really, aside from, I don't know, maybe maybe Van Damme, not just just not up to his normal standards. Yeah. I mean, relatively low standards for actual acting. Like, I mean, let's be real. He's, his enjoyable movies are not, like, for his acting. It's, like, his charm more than anything. But even then, I, in, the, in the notes, you said that, like, he, like, he almost looked like he was drunk during some of the scenes. He did. <laughs> and like, he had a right, shoulder right. thing going on, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't, he just looked like he was drunk and coked out of his mind. He just, yeah. he acted that way too. And I, I bet, know. like, and I bet his, um, his attitude on set may have brought some of the movie down as well as a whole. It could have. You bring yeah. that negativity to the, to the creative process and you got, yeah. you can bring him down. But I don't know. I thought, and I thought his accent, like, it's never, it didn't bother me in the movie. But it seemed like he was slurring his words. I mean, yeah. he seemed drunk, yeah. didn't he? A little bit. You heard the clips. A Everybody bit. heard it. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, a little the bit. other one that I would say that we could recast is Ken. I thought, oh, yeah, yeah. And not that this this could actually be done, but in a perfect world, I would cast Patrick Swayze as Ken. Oh, I think '90s Patrick Swayze as Ken. With the Get the hair top. going. Get the mop top going. I would have like liked it. that. I, I like think it. that's good. But yeah. I like the other actors for the most yeah. part. I agree because I felt like that duo of Ryu and Ken suffered the most from not having a real actor because yeah. they shared a lot of scenes alone together. And anytime they did that, it was Ken carrying the acting. And let's, let's be honest. He just wasn't very good. Was he? He wasn't that great. No, he wasn't. <laughs> he <just> wasn't. <laughs> so, I don't know. They, I didn't yeah, like... they, they could have used a real actor in that, in that scene or in that, I... in that duo. I just hated their backstory too. I got to yeah. tell you, like everything else was fine to me for the most part. Like I, I could even buy the TV crew for some reason. I just didn't like the idea of Ken and Ryu being, I don't know, con artists. I just, I don't know. I get it. It works for the movie. It just wasn't working for me. I don't yeah. know. But, but in, at the end of the day, I mean, really there's not much more to say about these guys because right. they didn't, they gave them like jobs, like, Oh, why are they there? But like, as far as backstory goes, other than really Chun Lee. We didn't really get any of that from any of no. them. You know, no. they're kind of like, oh, here they are. Here's Balrog. Oh, hi. He's cameraman. And he's also a tough guy. Like, that's best, really it. Yeah. The best one of them all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there. Vega. He was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Vega Vega looked the part. He looked like a pretty boy. With, and he, he could fight. Great body. Great boss with, with Sagat as his, like, kind of his, you know, kind of his boss. Yeah, that crew held it down probably the best. Is he the sub boss to the to the, he's the sub sub boss? Yeah, he's the he's like he's the, the top the of the tower before you get yeah. to Goro. Like, yeah, he's the sub sub boss. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I thought he was great. Yeah. Fun fact: he's the voice of Code Talker in Metal Gear Five. I just really? randomly found that out. Interesting. Blew me away when I when I found that out. Interesting. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, anything else you want to touch on with their looks? I think we should get into Guile versus Bison. But I thought their looks were pretty good. They found ways to get their costumes. Yeah. Outside of Blanca, which I. I have a lot to say about that. We'll I mean, get to it. We could either skip Blanca or we can get into Blanca. Whatever you want to do, because <laughs> I have I have a way. We should talk about it as part of the villain scale because he himself is part of Bison's plan. Yeah. But I agree with you. It was it was bad. It was an embarrassment, Drew. Embarrassment I wrote that I wrote that I down too. I wrote this is verbatim on my notepad. Blanca is an embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> It was so bad. Yeah. Let's let's talk about it right now. I don't even I don't even want to wait. Right. It's ridiculous. Like, what were they thinking with that? The <laughs> hair? <were> <laughs> like, I'm serious, man. That made the movie lose yeah. a little bit of credibility yeah. because of how bad that was. Like, it he wasn't even like a really jacked person. You know how no. like when they did Bane no. and Batman and Robin? Yeah. Like that was kind of a joke, but at least they gave the guy like inflatable muscles. Yeah. They just put this guy in like a tank, they sprayed him with green spray tan, yeah. and they gave him crappy orange wig. Yeah. Like what the like, hell? Yeah, like Zangief was more physically impressive than Blanca. And Blanca's supposed to be some some superior, you know, warrior soldier beast. It's ridiculous. And he was just like a guy that sprayed green. It's like, what year did uh, 
Did, was Lou Ferrigno the Hulk? And was that, it the seventies? It was like it was yeah, like the seventies. Like think. how was the seventies Hulk look better than this movie made in nineteen ninety four? Because it's kind of the same thing. They could have just casted a body double. Honestly, they they could have because yeah. they really should have. Because even his face, they gave like some crappy like clay. Like they could have made it a wrestler. They could have you know. They could have yeah. made it. You know, could have. I don't know. Ultimate Warrior. He was around yeah. back then. Yeah, he was alive. It, it could have been the ultimate. Exactly. It could have been it's the Sting. ultimate warrior. <laughs> Someone that has huge muscles. That's a recognizable. You don't have to pay him a ton. Those wrestlers, they don't ask for a ton of money, but especially back then. They just look they weren't at, they're looking for a movies. payday, man. They're looking for a payday and a break from from taking bumps all day. They'll, they'll gladly Dude. go paint themselves green for a hundred thousand dollars. Hogan would have done it. I mean, he even had the uh, hair. Yeah, he had the hair at the time. They yeah. just put a little bit of the orange on top. He'd be good. Yeah. Hogan, He'd be good. Hogan doesn't play bad guy, brother. I, I just not, not until nineteen ninety seven. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to this, but <laughs> let's talk about Guile versus Bison. Because this movie, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? There's this this TV camera thing. I don't even care. The the big thing <laughs> is Guile versus Bison, and that's that's the movie, right? That's the game. That's the movie. That's the game. That's the movie. I want to know how in the hell did Guile become the the commanding officer of the AN forces? This guy is a loose cannon. He is the <laughs> definition of yeah, loose cannon. He's not. He's not the type that would climb up the the, the chain, would he? No, no. He, he, clearly, he proves that he just does whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah. I got a list of violations. So the first one, he provoked an evil dictator on the news during a hostage crisis, and literally the guy started the countdown <laughs> because he flexed on him. He flexed on him, so he's like, "Start the timer right now." He was yeah. pissed. He yeah. was provoked. Yeah. He recruits criminals to fight for him. Ken and Ryu. He he pulled them into the. He didn't know the them. Army. He didn't know them. They could have. They could have been ruthless killers. Exactly. For all he knew. He didn't know anything about that. Yeah. He he faked his own death. To trick Bison, <laughs> which, like, you said it to me earlier. He's just laying in the morgue waiting for yeah. Chun-Li to walk in. Sat in the nation and then and then played, continued to play dead in the morgue for yeah. no reason to, to surprise Chun-Li, which he, was the most he, ridiculous part of the movie. He also call, basically gets his, his friend turned into, a, into, into, you know, into a freak, right? Freak. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you were afraid to say it. I was going to say he turned into a freak. I mean, he did because, I mean, not to be insensitive, I mean, I'm talking about a video game, like, yeah. person, right? Yeah. He he turned into this green monster because he called him out in front of Bison. Charlie, I'm coming for you. Yeah. Like, why would you name your <laughs> yeah, friend? Yeah, why would you name your friend? You might as well tell Bison where your wife and kids live, the address. Yeah. It's like, this is... This, this, Bison like, was like, on. yes, yes. It's like, He's wait like, a minute, you know this guy? <laughs> you, you, you care about this guy? Wait a minute. <laughs> There's there's other stuff on this list too, but then the biggest violation of all, he disobeys the order of the AN Secretary General <laughs> and stages a military coup. Yeah. As every podcast that or show or every YouTube channel that's ever done this episode, I'm going to give everybody credit for this. Yeah. He storms the castle. He performs a military coup. What yeah, the it's hell? almost it's almost like treason. It's How crazy. did this guy get in charge of this? Like I don't get it. Yeah, he did deserve the rank that he has. Like I don't know if like if he has something on somebody that like. You know, bump me up or I'm going to, you know, spill the beans. Like, I don't know. He must, there must be some kind of bribery angle going on there. I've Loose heard cannon, man. Yeah, there's no other reason that he would have played the game, the military game, the correct way to become Colonel. Loose, loosest of cannons. Loosest of cannons. <laughs> loosest. That cannon is so loose. And just FYI for you, I didn't catch a split in this movie, did you? Nah, no split, man. Is this the second one that he didn't do a split? Because he didn't do one in Sudden Death either. Can he do a split drunk? That, that we don't know. <laughs> That's we don't know. true. Maybe he can't do it. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> Let's move to Bison. What do you think of Raul Julia's dying performance? That son of a bitch, Bison. <laughs> Raul Julia Gulia drew. <laughs> Con Raul. Acting virtuoso. <laughs> Dude, he... He was overacting, first of all. Maybe yeah. he knew. Did he know? He knew. That this was the this end. It's a cartoon. No, but, but he knew that first, A, he knew it was cartoon. But oh, you mean B, he gave all of his energy? Did he know that, like, it was, like, pretty much, he, this might be his last go around? I mean, they said it was terminal. I would yeah. assume by this point he knew, but. But, like, maybe he, he might have, like, you know, he left it all out there, like like a Chet Stedman situation, yeah. where it's like you, you get fired till you got nothing left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he just acted his ass off, man. And I'm not even I'm not even joking around. Like he was too good for this movie. He was. Right? If he wasn't Bison and it was some random jag off that like wasn't half as good, yeah, the movie would be unwatchable. Then the movie would then be unwatchable. 
Yeah. And I think a lot of people said that to us on Twitter and Facebook. Like, the, he makes that movie. He's what everybody remembers from the movie. Yeah. When you when you look at this, you think about him. He was that good. He yeah. put on a clinic. He put on an acting clinic. There's no doubt about it. He was awesome. And I know, like, and he was a draw for me even as a kid because I remember him as uh, as Gomez. And like yeah. the Adams family, Adams family. The, the two Adams family movies were like were very prominent for me growing up. I loved those movies. Me too. So when I saw that he was Bison, I was like, oh man, like that was a draw for me. So let's take him through the villain scale, right? I mean, Bison is the big bad of the film. We'll just go through it and maybe we can talk about some of these things as we score it. Let's start off, we'll remind people what the, what the scale is. If it's your first time listening to this show, you know, we have a villain scale. We put all the big bads through it. We've got look and style. Do they have ponytails? What are their accessories? We've got their hideout and their lair. We've got their plan. What are they doing to dominate? And then we got their henchmen, the four major categories. It's one to five. And then we score it in the end, and then we give them give them what what is their what is their tally? What is right? their How worth? do they hold up? Yeah. So I want to ask you, Bison. Let's start with the look and style, man. Because I, I I don't even know how he's going to break the scale. We broke it with well, the, the the day after tomorrow. Yeah. To me, the but storm. This is, yeah. Well, I'm going to call it right now. The storm from last episode, day after tomorrow, disqualified. Is disqualified. It'll be it'll be an ast- there's an asterisk okay. next to that. It's it's got the asterisk. But what he might have Bison? Some, he might have some weaknesses here. But for look, first of all, we got to talk about the hat. Absolutely. Or hats. And we got to talk about the cape. Yeah. And the cape maneuver that he would flip over his over his back when he's got to use his arms. Right. If he's not using his arms, his arms are in in the cape. But if he at all has to like hop on a joystick or whatever, whoosh, cape flies up. It's a sweet move. It's a very sweet move. I mean, he's got like the air bisons, his little boots. When the pony gets electricity, I'm gonna give him a five. I mean, I hate to like just give him a five right away, but I'm gonna give him a five. Oh, it's even it's yeah. for me too. Like he had multiple outfits of the same kind of yeah. outfit, but yeah. different. Like, he had a theme going. He had the Hugh Hefner smoking jacket robe, outfit, yeah. but it was the same outfit that he had, but just with like you know I don't know it was like yeah. velour or or some type of yeah. satin. And he had he had so much style. And the the Air Bisons, I had a G.I. Joe figure of this toy, yeah. and the bottom of the feet glowed like in Ooh. the movie. And it was awesome. It was That's one of my favorite yeah, little like, G.I. Joe toys. Yeah. I just loved it. It was awesome. Dude, he had some of the best style of anybody I've ever seen in terms of villains in the movie. And it was like good quality. We talk about like joke of a of a set pieces and stuff. Yeah. His costumes were actually like high quality. Like you could tell it was like leather. Yeah. Like it looked good. Well, all of the costumes, like even going to like Zankeef and DJ, and then even still down to the the henchmen, there wasn't much to Guile, but like he, like he looked good. Cammy looked good. Like everyone had like Chun Li when she got into her when she got into her final outfit there. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good costume design. I thought you know, they were pretty. All good. things considered, I'm going to five two. Yeah. What about his his hideout and layer? Because I have some things to say about this, but I, I want to know what you think. What do you, how do you rate that? See, this is where he's going to lose some points for me. Well, he gets points because his lair is in like underneath a temple. Yeah, it's pretty, or whatever. pretty awesome. It's pretty, pretty like awesome. Anchor Watt. It was like and, ridiculous. And pretty hidden. Like how did how did they like find him? I forget. Did the, they, was it was it a tracking boat. device? There was there's <laughs> I know that's how they got to him, but how did they find him? Was it the tracking device? I think it was the tracking device. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it was pretty well hidden. They just like got the jump on on him, right? But then when you go inside, I mean, I mentioned this earlier in the episode, like this, this, it was just so crappy. Like what year was this man? It looked like it was from the seventies. It, it, it almost looked like a space balls operation. <laughs> you know, it looked, you know what it looked like? It looked like the legend of the hidden temple set yeah, yes. like with the foam. Yes. With the, the fake, like, it looks like it's like, like Olmec is probably yeah. like styrofoam or something, Didn't it look but like he that? looks like badass. Like until you like look real close. What was the the monkey statue that they had to put together? The the oh. it was like a foam thing. That oh no yeah, yeah, could the, ever the foam monkey together. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's kind of what it looked like. But yeah, is that man. his fault or is that the set designer's fault? I don't care who's like. Well, hey, it's whoever put it together, man. So I'll go I, with you on that. I love, 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 loved his private quarters. Yeah, that we when we mentioned in the, in the intro to the episode, dude. Like. I mean, I, 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 
I don't want to throw the word sex dungeon around here, bro. Like, it kind of looked like it could be a sex dungeon. Like Christian press, Grey could, could yeah. learn a thing or two. You press a button on the wall, and all of a sudden, the, the heart-shaped bed pops out. You yeah. know? That, I mean, it, he had... What did he have? He had the the the, the robe. Yeah. The sweet robe. He had the painting of himself on the horse, right? Ridiculous. <laughs> it's White Goodman style. Yeah. He had the hanger for his cloak, which kind of looked like, I don't know, half badass, half, like, almost kinky. I don't know. Maybe that's my warped brain. He had the sweet bar. He had the bone chandelier. That was ridiculous. Skull-shaped fireplace, Drew. And then he had a gas trap just in case it was infiltrated. That's what I'm saying. How are you not going to give him a five on this? Come on now. But his private quarters alone bump him up an extra point. But I can't give him too many extra bonus points for the rest of the trash. So, (laughs) well, I'm sorry. Long story short, or short story long. Um... He gets 1.5 points for it being underneath a temple. He gets two points for the sweet uh, owner's lounge, right? Yeah. That's, that's a 3.5. But he loses a full point because everything's made of styrofoam. All right. So I, I'm giving it a 2.5. Two, 2.5? Yep, 2.5. Sorry. Get out of here with I that. Love, I love his private quarters. I love it to death. But it can't save the overall picture. I the bone chandelier alone gives me a five. Like it's you know, I like to imagine those are yeah. like the bones of his victims and his yeah. enemies. It's like the Vigo the Carpathian yeah. style. Yeah. Like yep. you know, that's 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 a five. I, I can't even go lower than a five. Yeah. Bone chandelier, right? And the gas so, chamber. I mean, come on now. Yeah. That's awesome. Just in case it's infiltrated, which it was. What about his plan? Because I've got some details here for He's you. He's got a, uh, which which one, Drew? He's got a lot of plans. Tell tell me about his plan. plans. Like what Big are plans. what are his plans for domination? How do you rate this? I don't know because well, I guess his ultimate goal is world domination, right? But he wants he wants to create Bisonopolis, which is not a silly nickname that we made up. It's actually what he called it. Right? It was written on the wall. <laughs> yeah, it was written on the wall. Uh in order to Create Bisonopolis. It seems like he needs $20 billion with a B. <laughs> billion, right? So he has gives them 72 hours to give him $20 billion or he kills like what? Like It's like 30 hostages 30 or hostages. They were in like a pit too. I, I mean, I'm, I'm no... Uh, this, uh, this could get me in trouble, Drew. I'm, I'm just going to say it because this is a safe space, right? Oh, yeah, of course. No Are judgments. 30 civilians worth $20 billion, Drew? <laughs> You don't have yes. to answer that. I'm just asking it. Yes. <laughs> they are. You're such a such a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> One is. <laughs> I mean, I don't negotiate with terrorists. I mean, call me call me Van Dam, but I don't negotiate with terrorists. All I'm saying is that well, that is a lot of money. <laughs> it is a lot of money. Think of all the people he can kill with twenty billion dollars. That's true. Right? That's true. I'll say no more. Say no more here. I, no, I, no, I'm not. I didn't say. I didn't say they weren't worth it. I just asked the question. All I did well, was ponder the question, Drew. I answered, but yeah. I'll, I'll keep my silence for yeah. the rest of it. And then he wanted to also create the genetic super soldier Blanca and have like a whole bunch of Blancas, I guess, testing the one and you know seeing what happens from there, right? Mm-hmm. How do you feel about all these plans? Well, you go first this time. I, I'll, I kind of going to take it the way that you did, right? So I definitely, I give him two points for Bisonopolis alone, because that's, yeah. that's just awesome. He wanted his own country. Yeah. <laughs> he, Bisonopolis is a great name, first off. Or continent. I don't know how big yeah. Bisonopolis was going to be. I don't know. Was it a city, a country, or a continent? I think, I think having three days, three days to get $20 billion, it's kind of a lot of days, but it's also still, like, it gives the, the, the AN, I guess, it's the AN, enough of a thing like hey maybe we can scrounge together this 20 30, 20 billion dollars yeah but they're probably not going to get it so you know and they don't negotiate with terrorists even though they said they would in the end so did. i'm going to give yeah. him i'm going to give him another point for that so that's okay. that's two as well uh-huh. the other one that you didn't mention that i want to give him one point for is the fact that he had his own currency he had bison ah, bucks. Ah, the bison bucks. You know, he had his dollar, he had, and he was trying to pay all his people off with these bison bucks. How was he going to get those bison bucks, Drew? He how, was he gonna, that, how was he going to make them valuable? And he's delusional, right? So that this yeah. is where he starts to lose some points. Yeah. He said that he was going to make them worth five British pounds each once he kidnaps the queen. So he's also got a plan <laughs> to kidnap the queen. <laughs> so true. That, that line came out of nowhere. And up until that moment of the movie, which was about halfway through, maybe even a little more, he had not yet showed himself to be absolutely batshit crazy yet. 
Yes. Right? You're right. So he he uh he generated this facade that he was doing this for quote unquote the greater good, right? The right. super soldier thing, this, that, and the other, creating Bicetopolis a better place for us all. But like it's like you could talk yourself to okay, well, maybe this guy, who knows, maybe he is gonna do something good. But when he mentions kidnapping the queen and ha- and he literally has millions of his own bison bucks in a he suitcase. Printed them. He printed them already. Like he's he's dead he's serious ready. about this. Yeah. That's what okay, this guy's freaking nuts. Yeah, so so I gave him the, the two and the two and the one, but I'm actually I'm gonna deduct a point here because he has awesome plans, right? So he's a little bit yeah. crazy with the bison bucks thing, and it really isn't worth anything. But then I'm also going to deduct a point because of how crappy Blanca was and how <laughs> just try to program this guy with like these giant glasses and like videos, oh, like man. screens. I got, yeah. And the fact that Dalsim was able to just hack that easily. Yeah. Like, come on. That, that's that's I, where I got, he starts to lose some points. I got a question, Drew. Like, so they were they were subliminally brainwashing him with like images of, of death and destruction, like Clockwork yeah. Orange or whatever, right? So where did the good videos come from? Because last I checked, this is 1994 and YouTube didn't exist yet. Did he so take unless, like, a, like a tape in his pocket? Unless, unless Martin Luther King's speech was already in M. Bison's like mainframe or whatever, was already downloaded on there. Like how did he hack that in there along with children playing and butterflies and bunnies it's and true. bunnies hopping? Like how did, how did he get the good footage to, to reverse brainwash the guy? I have to take a point away for that. So I'm I'm not gonna give him a perfect I'm not gonna give him a perfect score because I gotta give him a four on that. I'll give him a four for his plan. Wow. What's give what's him your a score? Four. That's I'm pretty high though. I, I do like that he's very ambitious. Like really. His twenty billion dollar scheme was probably never gonna work. Like they were never gonna give him that money. They were gonna find a way. Even though they, they did were. eventually cave, like there's always gonna like Van Damme was coming. V- Guile was coming, right? Or somebody, yeah. they were coming. In this fantastical world, somebody was coming for his ass, right? I love the Bicetopolis idea, and I would I would live there, you know, if, you know, the, the rent, if the soul, rent was good, if the rent was good, you know. Do I get a cloak? If I get a <laughs> you cloak. Do you get those shoes? Depends, depends, you know. Is there a uniform? And, you know. There it's clearly kinda, is. It's kind of like Zankief, as we'll get into the henchmen later on. It's like, you know. I mean, I could get talked into Bisonopolis, you know, give or take, you know, as long as there's no death or destruction going on. If we're not like, you know, we don't know if he was really going to kill all 20, all, all 30 of those people. He killed two of them. I think but like, he was. But like, maybe I, that was it. I, don't I know. trusted him. I, I thought he was going to do it. No, I'm not. I'm not condoning terrorism, Drew. I'm just kidding. Uh, he's getting a solid three for me. One point for each. I, I like his I like his uh, drive and his motivation. But the execution just wasn't there. And especially the Blanca aspect of it just just showed me that he like he gave no thought into the science of this whole thing. And and because he bungled Blanca so badly, how crappy was Bisonopolis really gonna be, honestly? <laughs> That's true. If he was gonna have a bunch of Blancas running around, yeah. and, these guys are not yeah. gonna be super soldiers. And 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 the, the the shape that his lair is in with all these outdated computers and styrofoam walls and and bad doors that don't open and close properly. Yeah. How's the whole city slash country going to look? That That's true. Is this Besides like a, his, his, his private lair looked awesome. Is this like, like, it's just going like to be North Korea? Though. Like where they, yeah. they, I mean, not to yes. get like real yes. world here, but it's kind of like North it Korea might. where like the palace is awesome and the rest of the country's in shambles. You nailed it. That's exactly it. That because this exactly dictator it. guy's like, yep. he's living a lie yep. basically. Yep. That's kind of what His quarters is, right? are going to look balling with that $20 billion. He's right. going to cheapskate the rest of that, man. So no. So you're going three, you said? I'm going to give him a three, which is right. high considering his execution, but I liked his drive. I'll, I'll take it. What about the henchmen now? Because there's there's a bunch to talk about. Because we yeah. said DJ, Zangief, these random G.I. Joe looking guys that are running around with like the Cobra helmets. Yeah. Like what what do you consider? Is, is Sagata a sub boss? Like how do you, how do you make okay. sense of this? All right. So first of all, his two main men in the building, DJ and Zangief, I like that they were both like one was motivated by money and the other was motivated by like basically being brainwashed where Zangief yeah. was, was brainwashed to think he was fighting for the greater good. And DJ was saying, Oh, they paid me a lot of money. You know, I like that they were the comedy relief. Like they had like, they, yeah. they were good bouncing off each other and they both had good lines separate from each other as well. DJ, I, 
I can't say he was effective, but like, you know, you know the term fake it till you make it. Yeah. That's probably what he was going for there. Like he's just trying not to get killed by Bison on a bad mood one day, right? So he's like the yes men. Yeah. And Zankeef is like the model employee just because he's brainwashed. So he had two good lieutenants there. I like the look of his little army, right? They're they like were the G.I. Joe. Silent. Yeah, like the G- they kind of look like the G.I. Joe bad guys. What were they called? The the, the, the Cobras. The, Cobras, think, the right? Cobra clan or whatever. Yeah. And Sagat, which I guess you could call his sub boss, which is was the arms his arms dealer, slash sub boss. They I mean they they were at odds a little bit over some miscommunication on goods, right? Sagat didn't believe in the bison buck, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> he did not. No, did not at all. He did almost, not believe almost in got it. killed over it. But <laughs> But no, I I would uh, as we, as with all movies, his henchmen were just totally ineffective. Couldn't yeah. shoot for shit, right? It just goes to show you that like Bison, maybe a lot like the director of this movie. Yeah, he you know had some had some ideas, but he really only kind of looked out for himself, but couldn't really execute on a grander scale. I, don't I agree. Know, so I'm gonna give him two point five. Just gonna give him two point five. So I, I I kind of am in the same boat as you. I think DJ was awful. He he did a great job pushing buttons and twisting knobs. <laughs> but really, what did he do? He did nothing. Like, he did nothing. Zangief clearly was brainwashed, so he didn't really believe in the cause because at the end, he winds up actually saving the other guys. So that's a fail on his part. It's a huge failure. He didn't couldn't even keep his own guys. These G.I. Joe-looking guys couldn't shoot anybody. They were bad. They did have a good look. I'll give the look they and the style. Great. They did look great. They looked awesome. And they even had matching like karate geese for Ken and Ryu. And they gave him like a little patch. The skulls were everywhere. That was good. <laughs> yeah. I like that. They had, they had a hand symbol. Yeah. With like yeah. The, the sideways thumb. I mean, right. I know a lot of it is, an, uh, it kind of looks like an allusion to Nazism, which is a little scary, but like. Yes, yeah, it definitely was. I mean, it was you know, overtly there. Like that yeah. was obvious. But right? from His a fantastical point of view, removed from that, it was like a cool idea for a bad guy faction. Right. But I would, where I'm really going to knock him like, like hard, I'm going to knock him hard for this. He couldn't control Sagat as his sub boss. And, and I kind of look at him as more yeah. of like, he should have been a sub boss, but he was more of a rival. So yeah. he loses well, major points for yeah. me on that. He loses major points for me on that. I'm giving him a two here. I'm yeah. giving him a two. It's fair. I don't no, think it worked out for him. I yeah. just don't. And and, and again, uh, we talked about this uh, in the Sagat section. It's a little disappointing that Sagat was not as much of a badass as he was in the game. Like, he was painted in this movie as a former badass who kind of got older. Yeah. Uh, older in age. So, couldn't really, like, hold his own in a fight the way he used to. Got his ass beat pretty easily by Ken. That's true. But I think if you give if you give Sagat enough time, I think he'd have found a way to kind of outsmart Bison. I think yeah. he was playing the long game there. I don't know. Well, I think Bison was too like well, yeah. pie, in, pie in the sky. Yeah, and the thing about Bison is he's crazy. So That's like he's thing. not thinking clearly. Sagat seems like a more calculated he's guy. He's a schemer. Yeah. He's a schemer. Yeah. Like Bison just wants to spend all his money so he can build this yep. crazy place. But I yeah. think Sagat knows he's he's on the streets, man. He knows yeah. what he's doing. He's yeah. literally on the streets. Yeah, and Sagat only got busted because Bison got a little sloppy. He got busted right. by Van Damme. If Van Damme wasn't snooping around looking for Bison, then Sagat's operation never would have got busted. What was your score for? 2.5? 2.5 for the henchman. So, okay. So you, if I total you up, you had 5, 2.5, 3, and 2.5. So you got 13. I got 16 because I had 5, 5, 4, and 2. So, you know, yeah. not a perfect score here. Obviously, he no. didn't break the scale like we thought. I think 16 is pretty high, though. It is pretty, for me, I mean, you. But you know me, I, I score a lot. I score higher probably, the so curve. Yeah, so what's the average for all you, you, know, you math majors out there? So, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's about a 14.5. So it's a 14 and a half here, yeah. right? So 14 and a half. I mean, I think, I don't know. We'd have what's, to, we'd have to compare like him to a, Riddler and Two-Face. Like what's, what's like a C plus? It's what not is bad. Is that a B I mean, minus? it's not bad. A B minus? He, he lost some steam, man. He yeah. lost some steam. What can you say? Yeah. So now, now that we, we rated him, Let's talk a little bit about this final assault before we get out of here. We right. talked about Van Damme stealing the army, performing this military coup, getting in his stealth boat. <laughs> isn't let me ask you, isn't a stealth boat just a submarine? Like should yeah. should a stealth boat just have been a sub? <laughs> yeah. Like and there's a, a funny piece of trivia on this one. Apparently they weren't able to use air. The Thai government over in Thailand wouldn't let them use the airspace for the number of aircraft that they wanted to use. So they had to change it to another, another on the fly here, audible, 
they made it a boat assault instead, <laughs> which is like, I don't know how they did it. No wonder this was like not really a thought through idea you know, here. A, I didn't know it was actually in Thailand. That's pretty cool that they yeah. shot it in Thailand. And B, I, I, I thought that like attacking him by boat is like, it's, an, it's the easiest way to get caught, right? Well, they were like, it's the only way we're going to, we're yeah. going to sneak in by boat. I'm like, what? <laughs> and the dude's like, it's a suicide mission as we, as we played earlier. <laughs> He's like, oh, good thing. The crazy man's going to pilot it is me. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, and like, it's true. Just, it's like, it, you're so caught. You're, there's nowhere to go. You're on a boat and it's like you, you're, you're in a little thing. Like once they see where you're at, your, your movement is totally predictable. <laughs> the best part too. And I, I couldn't tell if it was serious or not. When they're riding this boat, and he's got like the stealth mode on or whatever yeah. it is, you can still see the wake. Like it's yeah. not stealthy. Yeah. Like yeah. at least if you're in an airplane, you're in the air, you're above the clouds. They can't see you, right? The radar's yeah. there, but it, it just it made no sense. I, I liked. I thought the look of the stealth boat was pretty cool, though. Like it, it reminded me of the I Spy remake with Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson, the Leafy Bug. It's like oh, the Leafy. Man. It was the Leafy Bug, man. Would you say it looked stealthy? <laughs> it, sure it looked did. pretty good. Yeah, it, it was, the, it, was good. The, it was the leafy bug on water, man. I enjoyed it. But they had this like crazy all out assault. I don't there's too much to even talk about here. There was a bunch no, of fights. I'm, I'm that glad were you happening. brought up the boat because it was pretty ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I don't know. I mean, the one thing I, I, I just maybe want to touch on quickly is there was a bunch of these fights that happened. Were they like rivals from the game or was it just know. random fights? Yeah, long story short, they bust through in the boat, they get to the lair and they pretty much, they start, they break off into smaller fights, one guy versus another guy or girl until, you know, Bison was defeated or whatever. So I don't think they were totally, you know, enemies in the game. Like obviously Guile and Bison, I don't think Ryu and Vega had a thing. Maybe they did, I don't know. Honda and Zangief, they were just the big guys. Yeah. So I don't know. It's not like a Sub Zero yeah. Scorpion yeah. thing, and I always thought Balrog was a bad guy. I didn't. Maybe they made yeah. him good for. The, maybe they made him good for the movie. But you didn't know no. he was a cameraman. No, <laughs> you didn't know. Nope, had no Which, idea. By the way, maybe he's a good guy. That's why he left his boxing gloves on when he was fighting people. Like, why would <laughs> he purposely put the boxing gloves on so that he wouldn't hurt the bad guys? Like, what was that about? Well, maybe he. Oh, I, actually, I have a very good explanation for this, Drew. Most of the guys he was punching were henchmen that had helmets on. True. So to not break his hand. That's actually a smart move then. Right? Perfect. Fair point. Perfect reason to have the gloves. But I like that he traveled with them, right? A fair point. <laughs> so it's not like they were in a lot in the locker room somewhere in Bison Land and Bisonopolis, right? But no. But no, yeah, all these fights, Honda versus Zanke, Ryu Vega, Ken Sagat, Guile Bison, and then the rest were fighting henchmen or whatever. No, I just think they were just, you know, let's put the big guy into the big guy. Let's pay off the Ryu versus Vega fight that we were promised earlier in the movie. I don't know. As far as all these fights go, like, I don't think I ever asked you, who who's your go-to fighter in Street Fighter? I, I usually was was Ryu, and I liked I liked Guile, but I like Ryu the best. Yeah. Ryu or Ken. I like the yeah. two of them. Those were my favorite. Obviously, favorites. a lot. everybody likes Ryu. I like Ryu. Um, I, I used Sagat a lot because I thought, like, his reach was really good. I thought yeah. his, his, his knee strike was a little unfair, like, in a, in a good way. For me, <laughs> never use like Guile. Muay Thai style. I never use Guile because his secondary move, the kick, like I, ne- I can never like do the move it was like the flash properly. Kick is whatever they yeah. call it. I can never do it properly. It was like down up or whatever, and I always yeah. messed up the control. And obviously, like if you use Bison, you're a cheating bastard. So like you can't pick Bison. True. It's unfair. True. <laughs> so. <laughs> Which we didn't talk about this, and maybe maybe we need to touch on this. But Street Fighter, the movie, the game. Oh yeah. I, we I, like, I never I played it, but I, like I never understood the reason for it. Right? It's like they made Mortal Kombat as an anti Street Fighter because they wanted to use like real caption of people, yeah. and then you go and make a movie about a game that was like sprites. So then you take the actual people and mocap them like they did for Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Did you did you ever play this game? Because I never played it. No, no. I I don't even think I like knew it existed until like much later. It looks really bad. Like as a kid, ninety four. Like I kind of ha- didn't really have much of an idea that it existed. They tried to gimmick the Mortal Kombat aspect of it for this game, but it, they had the real people. But I think I saw yeah. like Akuma's in this, but he wasn't even in the movie. No. So what's that about? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, for, uh, refresh my memory. Like, was this made for? Like, this couldn't have been a Super Nintendo game, right? Was this a PlayStation One game? I it was ninety four, so I think it was a Super this, Nintendo. It came game. out during the movie. Is that right? Yeah, it was. It was for the and movie. It had to have been. 
It, it definitely Sega, was. Must have been for Sega Super I don't think it was popular. I think it because people don't want to play that game. No. And the movie didn't. I mean, the movie did yeah. well monetarily, right? right. But critically, yeah. it was bad. But no. people don't want to play that. They want to no. play Street Fighter Two. Is the draw just the control Van Dam and, and Bison? That's what it is. They use yeah. the real actors, and and it's like. I'll post a picture of it, but the picture of of Blanca is like even worse than the movie. Oh God, yeah, I've seen, it's yeah, just yeah, as it's, bad as you would expect. It's so oh. bad. Oh, and like, it's an embarrassment. It, what's, what's a shame? What I was disappointed in was uh, the other character I used all the time was Dalson. Yeah, he's and, good. like he just flat out wasn't represented in this movie, except for as like a you know as a goofy scientist, and I was a little disappointed in that. But like, where would you fit him in the story? I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know that if that's one way to maybe wrap out all these characters and kind yeah. of wrap it up. It's just that I don't know when you look at Mortal Kombat the movie, everybody for the first one, not the second one. The second one's a different story, but the first one they kind of had a reason for being in the movie, like, and yeah. and it was integral to the story. Yeah, this or, felt like they yeah. created story points to put the character in. Sure. Yeah, and it was it's definitely harder to do it that way, and. I think the results showed that it was weaker for it. Yeah. I mean, do you think that the Guile Bison payoff fight was worth it? Because I thought it was a good fight, personally, especially yeah. knowing that he was dying of cancer I liked it. during no, this. No, I liked it. No. It's, it's, I liked that Bison was calling him out all movie to like fight him hand-to-hand. And yeah. like, he held up his end of the bargain. Like He didn't cheat until he like halfway died and used electrocuted him. him. <laughs> yeah, but, but for the first part, like he was pretty fair, right? It's like the second boss yeah. fight. Like he was there. he wasn't a bitch about it. He was tough. He was actually tough and like backed it up and actually fought him. I like I, I like that fight a lot. I thought it was pretty yeah. good. But the rest of it was I mean it was just a giant like gun fest, right? Like everybody's fighting and, and whatnot. It was cool. No. But I, I think Mortal Kombat was was better when you think about it. Yeah, because Mortal Kombat was definitely truer to the video games because it it, it like they obviously, the makers of that movie knew the styles of those fighters. And the fighters have like, the Mortal Kombat has more of a story to its actual game than Street Fighter does. Yeah. So it's exactly. easier to like, like, you know, harness the, you know, the feel of, of, the, of the franchise. The one thing that I'm really disappointed that they didn't put in this movie, they put all this random stuff in and all these, all these little ways to show about the game. How did they not have a scene of these guys beating up the car? <laughs> Man, you are the biggest fan of beat up a car. I swear to God, if you guys don't know Drew, because he it's loves nothing more than, than people punching cars, he loves it. I mean, think <laughs> about that game. You've got to beat up the car. It's like yeah. test your might in Mortal yep. Kombat. Like they're breaking bricks, but yeah. like, what's tougher than guys like beating up a car? Yeah, like they could have had a scene where like who are the two guys that do it? Could have been Balrog and yeah. and E Honda. They, they could have been they could have came across. They could have came across a guy who was trying to get away and the car broke down and he locked the door so they couldn't get at him and they start beating the car up. Like, scene writes itself. Like, there I just spent thir- three seconds thinking of it and I could have put it into action. Nobody called me up. So before we get out of here, what do you? how would you leave people with this movie? Do you think it was as good as you remember? Was it worse than no. you remember? Would, what would you give it, like, it was, in terms of a score? It was better than I remember as far as watchability goes. But it was just as bad as I remember as far as actually it being a good movie. Or what do you think movie. is better, Mortal Kombat Annihilation or this movie? <sighs> <laughs> Wish they I, could see your face right I now. Pause there, man. Wish they could see your face right now. I'd rather watch Mortal Kombat Annihilation if I had to watch another movie again of the two. I think you need to watch that movie again and tell me. I don't me. think uh, this is a bold statement. I probably will never watch Street Fighter ever again in my life. This is probably the last time I'll watch it. We'll see. And we'll see. for those of you that got this far into the podcast and didn't watch Street Fighter, I'm going to tell you, don't watch it. Just, I, you hit listen to this podcast and you're good. You don't have to watch it. I think you need to watch it because, well, unless we already put all the clips that you need to hear, just, right? So. Just Google a screenshot of Blanca, really, and that's all you need visually. <laughs> Audio wise, we got you covered in the podcast. <laughs> oh my god, that'll about do it for us here. We went on and on for twenty hours just about Street Fighter the movie, <laughs> but you know what else can we say? <laughs> if you saw this movie, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, let us know. The Last Row Podcast at Gmail dot com on Twitter at the Last Row Pod, Facebook dot com slash the Last Row Pod, Instagram at the last row pod send us an email leave us a po- apple podcast review thanks to everybody that's done so so far i'm really curious what people think of this movie i, yeah. I need to know and i and just you know need what? to know 
I would also like to know, let us know if you listened to the podcast and didn't watch the movie. I mean, I feel to me, that's a compliment to our show. Yeah. So <laughs> let, yeah, let, let us know if you listened to the podcast, but did not watch the movie. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and just to remind everybody, we'll be back in two weeks on Thursday, March 11th with our next episode. Thanks to everybody that's listening and we'll see you guys in two weeks. 